Hello everyone and welcome to a brand new tutorial series on ordering a pizza with Python. Now if you didn't guess from kind of the thumbnail and the title, what we're going to be doing here is actually working with an API, which stands for an application programming interface. We're going to be learning how we can work with APIs, how we can kind of dig into a code base, understand what's going on and start using the tools that have been built for us. And then obviously we're going to be using that to well order a pizza. So basically what this API is going to allow us to do is create some kind of customer object, which is going to have information about a customer. So like like name, address, all of that. We can find stores that are close to a customer. Once we find a specific store that we'd like to order from, what we can actually do is look through the menu and then order some specific items from that. And then finally, we can insert our credit card or payment details and actually place an order and have it arrive at our house. So before I go too far, I will mention that everything you guys are going to see here will be up on GitHub. So there will be a link in the description. You'll actually need to go to this link um, once we get into the setup phase of this video, which will be in just one minute. And just in case anyone gets mad at me here, I would like to say this is largely inspired by a YouTube channel called Jarvis Johnson, which I'll leave a link to in the description as well. He made this video here. You might see my mouse hovering over it. I wrote a program to order a pizza, and I believe that the API we're actually using here, I forked this from his GitHub repository. He's made a few changes to it himself, so I don't know exactly what changes are his, but you can look through kind of the commits to see what he's done versus what Domino's done. And you can also see some of the changes I've added to the API to make it a little bit easier for this tutorial series. So anyways, before we get too far, I need to quickly mention the sponsor of this series, which is Kite. So let's get into that. Before we get started, I need to talk about the sponsor of today's video, which is Kite. Now, Kite is a free plugin for your IDE or text editor that uses machine learning to give you the best possible completions for your Python code. It's capable of completing entire lines, entire function calls, and it ranks all of its completions by relevance so you get shown the best ones first. It even has another feature called Intelligent Snippets, which allows you to quickly tab through the different options and choose which completion you'd like. One of the coolest features that comes with Kite is called Copilot. Now what Copilot does is provide one-click documentation. It shows you information about modules, classes, methods, and functions based on your cursor location. Now the best part of Kite is that it's free and you can download it at the link below. So Kite is awesome guys, trust me, you know, I use it for all of my coding. You'll see throughout this video that I'm using Kite auto completions, which actually makes it a lot easier to program and use APIs like this. But anyways, enough of that, I want to go and start talking about how we can actually start writing some code and exploring this API. So essentially, this is not, you know, a typical Python library. This doesn't exist on pip. I can't just pip install, you know, dominoes. Well, you can, but it's not going to have this version. What we're actually going to do is clone this GitHub repository and use this on our system to start writing some code. So I've done this. Um, you can see, you know, click the link in the description. There's a little bit of documentation on how to do the setup. We're going to run through this together to make sure no one makes any mistakes. And then, you know, if you want to whiz through this and you don't want to wait for all the videos, you can get an idea of kind of how some things work by reading through the readme file that is a part of this repository. So step one, go to the link in the description, get on this page. And what you're going to do is click clone or download. If you know how to use GitHub, you're welcome to clone it by using the link. For our purposes, we're just going to download the zip folder. So I'll do it like that. Now, I actually already have this downloaded, so I'm going to cancel that. But you guys just need to download this GitHub repository somehow, and then we'll move on to the next steps. So we're going to close this. I actually have my GitHub repository um, open. So this is all the files. I've just opened the entire folder in what's called sublime text. You guys can use whatever environment you want for this series. I'm going to be using sublime text. I'll leave a link to that in the description. If you are an absolute beginner and you know this will be OK if you're an absolute beginner, you can go to open folder from sublime text, find the folder you want to open. In this case, I've saved it to my desktop. It's called pizza pie or pizza API. Uh, click open. It should open all of these files for you and then you can browse through them. OK, so what we need to do now is actually install the requirements um, to be able to use this module. So we're going to go into the folder that we just downloaded. So whatever, you know, that GitHub repository lives on your computer, wherever you put it. And what we're going to do is just get into this interior folder. So inside of pizza API, and I'm going to open up a command prompt window. Now, if you're on Linux, you're going to or uh, Mac, you're going to open up a terminal window, but essentially just open one up. I'm going to type CMD in the top bar here that will open a command prop window like this. And we're going to use pip to install some requirements. Now, if you don't know how to do this or your pip isn't working, um, someone remind me because I'll probably forget, but I'll leave a card to how to install pip um, in like the top right or top left hand corner of the screen. OK, so what I'm going to do now is simply type this command. Now, it's very important that you make sure you're inside of this directory. So where it says users, Timot, desktop, uh, Pete's API, make sure you're inside this folder in your um, you know, terminal. So you can actually change directories by doing CD 
and this will allow you to select a directory that you want to go into. But the easiest way is just again to go up here, type CMD like that, hit enter, and then it will open at least if you're on Windows. So what we're going to do is type pip install hyphen r requirements.txt. I just completed that by hitting tab. What this is going to do is look through the text file called requirements.txt, which is inside of this directory here. And it's going to install the following modules for us. So requests, pi, harm, crest, uh, whatever all these other ones are, it's just going to install them. So what we're going to do is hit enter there, assuming that your pip is working and everything's good. It should install that and you should be fine. Now, I know I'm getting some like weird errors popping up here on my computer. I actually have everything installed already, so there's nothing to really be too worried about. But that is essentially how this works. So pip install hyphen r requirements.py, get the requirements and we should be good to go. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're actually going to just open up this folder and create a new Python file and actually start working and looking at this API. So I've opened all of this up here and I've created a new file called tutorial.py. Now, what we're going to do in this file is just do a few imports and stuff. But before we do that, I want to kind of explore what this API is, kind of some of the features of it and how it works. So let's go to this GitHub page before and let's actually read through this readme.txt file or whatever it is that's up here and see kind of how this actually works. So we can see this is a Python wrapper for the Domino's Pizza API. It's a port of the pizza node.js module. And, you know, you can go through all that. So what we are seeing right now is that the first step to actually working with this API is to create a customer object. So it says customer equals customer, and then we can insert some information. So it looks like last name, first name, we have an email, um, I believe this is a phone number and address. And I think that's it for the customer information. It says once we have a customer, what we can do is use the store locator module to find the closest store to the customer by doing a command like this. And then what we can do once we have that store is call the get menu. What this is going to do, I guess, is return to us some kind of menu object. And then we can search the menu for specific items. And in this case, it says we have, you know, Coke is what we're searching for. Now, when we do that, it prints to the console a bunch of codes followed by what the actual item name is and then the price of the item. These are the codes that we're actually going to use to be able to place an order and kind of select the different items that we want to put, you know, in our order. So notice here, then we go to the next line and we can create a new order. So order .begin custom order. We give the customer and the local dominoes we want to order from. And then here we type the codes that correspond to what we would have found up here when we were searching through the menu and we add these items to our order. So in this case, we have a 12 inch pizza. We have an extra Mariana cup or whatever that marinara. I think that's how you say it. And a two ounce bottle of Coke or 20 ounce bottle of Coke. So we can remove items by doing order dot remove. And then our last step here is to have a credit card object created and then place our order using that credit card and uh, also place the order, I guess, at the local dominoes. So that is essentially kind of the steps we need to go through. And that is kind of how this API works. So this is what's the quick start. Usually this is good to read, to understand kind of how these things are and what, like what this is. So let's now talk about how we can actually start using this. So we'll notice that actually there's a folder inside our kind of directory here called pizza APY. So pizza pie, I guess, right. And we can see that there's all these different files in here. And we can actually go ahead and open them up and have a look at what they do. And I would recommend that you guys read through a few of these if you want to understand kind of how this works on a deeper level. Now we have this init.py file as well. And notice in here, we have all these imports, essentially importing all of the different files that are also in this directory. Now, when we create this init.py file or when this init.py file is inside this folder, what this actually means is this folder is what we call a Python package. Now, this is good because this actually allows us to import the package as a whole rather than importing individual Python files like we might have had to done or might have had to do before. So if when we create a new file, what we're going to do is simply put that file somewhere in this kind of exterior directory. And that's exactly where I put this tutorial.py file. And in here, what we can simply do if we want to use all of the different parts of this pizza API, you know, kind of package that we've created is simply import pizza API like that. Now, by doing that, that's going to allow us to have access to all of the different files that are inside of here. And we're going to use some of these different files to, you know, create objects, create a customer and all of that. And what we're actually going to get started with here is just making a customer object, seeing how this kind of works. And then we'll move from there into some more detailed stuff later on. Okay. 
So I've imported pizza API. Now what I'm actually going to do is change this import statement around a little bit and import a customer object because that's where we need to get started when we need to order a pizza. So I'm going to say from pizza API import customer like that. And now what I'm going to do is create my first customer object. Now to do this, what I'm going to do is just say customer equals customer like that. And then when I put my brackets here, I'm going to start typing the different parameters that this customer object takes. Now, for example, right, like when we looked at if I can get out of this at our GitHub repository, we saw that it's looked like last name, first name, and then all these different things, right? But it doesn't actually tell us what all of these parameters are. We don't really know what we need to feed into the customer. And since there's no real documentation for this, other than whatever's on this quick start page, what we actually need to do is look at the code ourselves to figure out what we're going to need to do with this customer object. So what I'm going to do is click on this customer.py file that's inside of pizza API like this. And I'm actually just going to look at the initialization inside this class. And we can see that we have a few different properties here. And these are the order of which we're expecting different arguments. So in this case, we can say, you know, this is the customer who orders a pizza. That's what this customer object is. And in the initialization, we have first name, last name, email, phone and address. So that's what we need to feed to our customer object. So in this case, what I'm going to do is put my first name, which is Tim. I'm going to put my last name, which I'm just going to go with tech for now because I don't really feel like giving you guys my last name. Then what else did we need? So we had first name, last name, we need email. So I'm just going to say Tim at uh, tech with Tim dot net, which is actually an email of mine. If you want to send me something phone number, which is 905, uh, I'm going to put in some random stuff just so that you guys don't call me on my cell phone. And then finally an address and this address needs to come in in a certain form. Now, if we're ordering from different countries, our address might look a little bit different, right? So what we actually need for the address is, well, I'm just going to go here and reference this is we just need the street. We need the state or province, depending on where you live. Uh, or sorry, city, we need the state or province and we need a zip code or a postal code. Now I live in Canada. So for this address, what I'm going to do is actually just find one online and just throw it in here. So I don't give you guys my actual address. But if you live in the States, just know this is going to be a little bit different for you, right? You're going to need to put a zip code, which I believe is five digits, whereas my postal code is going to have numbers in it and it's going to be six um, characters long. OK, so I've inserted uh, inserted the address here, which is 40 Bay Street, Toronto, Ontario, M5G. And we're going to actually need to do a comma here. So what we're going to do is make sure that our address is, you know, kind of separated correctly. So we have that street number and name. So 40 Bay Street, we have the city, we have the province, then we have the postal code. And notice that even though I live in Canada and typically the postal codes are separated by space, I've not done that in this instance. So this is important. We need to make sure the input looks like this. And if you know what this address is, if you guys live in Canada, leave a comment down below because I think that'll be kind of fun if you guys guess what that is. OK, so now we've created a customer object. What's the next step? So let's have a look at our GitHub here and we can see that the next step is once we have a customer object is to find our local dominoes. So what we're going to do is I'm literally just going to copy this line that's here. So my local dominoes equals store locator dot find closest store to customer. And we're going to use this. So let's go back into our subline and let's paste that there. But what I need to do is make sure that I import sto store locator first. So I'm going to do comma, paste and put store locator up top here. So now we can use this. And what I'm actually going to do is simply print my local dom dominoes. And again, you know, you guys probably might realize that while I'm typing, we're getting these completions. Those completions are from kite, which is the sponsor of this tutorial series. OK, so let's have a look at this. So let's actually run this. I'm just going to hit control B. Uh, what's my error here? Ah, OK, I need to do something. I'll be back in one sec. Just find a finding a way to show you guys how to run this code. OK, so I've got my code running now. I apologize that this is a little bit small for you guys, but you can see now that when I've printed or I've done Python tutorial dot pi. So that's how I'm running my code. I get a store and address and then I get open now. Yes or no. So this is apparently or I guess not apparently this is the closest store to the customer that we put in. And it's telling us the closest Domino's is at 344 Front Street, uh, West Unit 107, Toronto, Ontario, open now. Yes. So mess around with your address in here or some other different addresses and use this kind of code and see if it's giving you different results and if it's working because this is where we're going to end off the video for now. So anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this so far. I know we haven't done much in the next video. We're going to do a lot more programming. 
but I wanted to get you guys kind of comfortable with the idea of using an API, working with an API, understanding where some of this code is coming from. For example, this is the customer um, class in here. So you can see kind of how this works. And then the store locator class is inside of store. And you can get kind of how we're actually, you know, getting that information and read through kind of the bottom, you know, underlying code to what we're writing up here. So anyways, that has been it. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, as always, leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you guys in the next tutorial.